morning students today we will discuss about capacitor capacitor or a conductor is a device we can say which can store electrical energy if we give electric charge to a conductor then its electric potential also increases and we can say that the conductor stores energy that is called as electrical energy as you know Potential is very is a function of charge. V is proportional to Q. And mathematically, you can write Q is proportional to V. Proportionality constant is C, so we write Q is equal to C into V, where C is called as capacitance of conductor. So mathematically, you can write C is equal to Q by V, where Q is electric charge stored in the conductor and V is electric tension of the conductor. So as I said, if you write this coulomb per volt, R, it is also called as Faraday. But more thing, the air, as it is a insulating or dielectric medium, at ordinary potential or in the ordinary field, it will not show conductor. But if the potential exceeds certain value, then air also becomes ionizing medium. It gets ionized. It can dissociate into ions. It becomes a conducting medium. So we can say that ionizing potential or breakdown potential of air it is 30,000 volt. It means that beyond this potential, air becomes a conducting medium. Let us consider. Suppose if we want to give one coulomb of charge to any conductor, how much, what size of conductor can hold this charge? As you know, potential due to the charge is given by the relation V is equal to by R. So from this R is equal to KQ by If you put the values, K is 9 times so 9 in R Q, if it is one coulomb potential. It should not exceed this so maximum potential if we consider that is 30,000 volt. Then from this, the value of R comes at 3 times 5 meter. It means that it is 300 kilometer. Imagine a sphere of radius 300 kilometer and hold a maximum of 1 coulomb charge. It means that small amount of charge can create very high potential of conductor if that potential exceeds averaging potential of air then the charge will radiate through the air so it is not the capacity of a conductor to hold that charge so the question that is how we can increase the capacity of conductor you know as you increase the charge Electrical energy stored in the conductor increases, but at the same time, when the charge increases, electric potential also increases. And if it is exceeding the energizing potential of air, then it will radiate to air. So, what is the way to increase the charge on the conductor? Let us consider suppose this is the conductor. If we give it a certain charge such that it can accept the charge such that its electric potential becomes maximum that is equal to we can say ionizing potential of air let this is a maximum potential that is created if we give further more charge then that will radiate through air now how can we increase the charge of this conductor so what we can do that is near this conductor if we put another conductor that is a neutral and this neutral conductor when it is placed closer to this conductor what will happen that is Okay, on this phase there is induction of opposite charge opposite phase here conduction of light this is what called as induction of charges or it is a redistribution of charges if this conductor is connected to ground then what will happen that is this charge will transfer to ground because of repulsive action ultimately you can say the electrons from the ground will come to and occupy this positive ions place and it will get neutralized. Now what is the situation? On this conductor initially the potential was maximum. Now because of this negative charge on this plate there is certain negative potential also. 
So net potential of this plate it will decrease because earlier it was having potential because of this positive charge now on this plate because of this negative charge also certain potential is there and that is a negative potential so net potential of the plate will be decreasing this is the simple way to decrease the potential now potential decreases compared to the energy potential of air then you can further give more charge so this way you can increase the capacity of conductor so instead of using single conductor if two conductors they are placed closer to each other one of them but is grounded then the capacity of that conductor increases and this is called as parallel plate capacitor or different different shape of the plates if you make then accordingly different types of capacitors you can make one is parallel plate capacitor parallel plate capacitor that consists two metal plates parallel to each other and separated by certain distance one of that is grounded this is a parallel plate capacitor another is a cylindrical capacitor in cylindrical capacitor there are two cylinders metal cylinders inner and outer one outer one that you connect with the ground that way you can connect make a cylindrical capacitor third one is a spherical capacitor Spherical capacitor to metal spheres. One of that is grounded. So this way, depending on the shape of the plates, capacitors are of different type: parallel capacitor, cylindrical capacitor, spherical capacitor. Okay. We will discuss here about parallel plate capacitor. We derive the equation for capacitance of this capacitor. It depends on which factors and of. So let us derive the equation for capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. For that, consider parallel plate capacitor having two plates, each of area A separated by distance B. Out of these two, let this one, another one plate is connected to the ground, and this plate, if given certain charge Q, then by induction on this plate, there will be charge minus Q. Because of this, the electric field between these plates that is from positive to negative, and the value of that will be as you know, electric field due to a charge plate, according to the application of Gauss theorem. Second application we had E due to this positive plate that will be equal to sigma by 2 epsilon 0. Sigma by Two epsilon zero. When the sigma is the surface charge density, sigma is equal to Q by A. Similarly, due to negatively charged plate, also electric field it is sigma by two epsilon naught. The direction that is for positive charge it is along this direction that is outward. For negative charge it is inward. So due to both the plates, electric field between the two plates of a capacitor has the same direction. And therefore, the net electric field between the two plates E is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon 0 plus sigma by 2 epsilon 0 that is equal to sigma by epsilon 0. This is the value of electric field. As this sigma is equal to Q by A, therefore, Electric field between the two plates, you can write E is equal to Q by epsilon naught A. This is electric field between the two plates of capacitor. We know that potential difference as a potential difference V is equal to or electric relation between electric field and potential difference is minus dV by dr. And for here, potential difference between these two plates, let's say if it is equal to V, if V is the potential difference between these two plates, then we can write E is equal to V by separation between the two plates as D. And therefore, you can write V is equal to E into D. 
here see due to the plate electric field sigma by epsilon epsilon zero it is a constant quantity sigma is constant epsilon constant two is also constant so we can write the equation for a potential difference v is equal to I'm putting the value of e that is q upon epsilon naught a into d and therefore you can write q by v that is equal to q by v is equal to epsilon naught a by d but this quantity q by v is nothing but c or less capacitance of conductor so c is equal to epsilon naught a by d here epsilon naught that is the medium between the two plates is a vacuum and that's why you can write this is a capacitance for a capacitor having vacuum between the plates you can represent by symbol c sub x zero you can see the relation that is capacitance depends on which factor one that is a medium permittivity of medium another is the area of plate and one more is a separation between the plates these are the factors on which the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor depends it is not depending on what amount of charge is given to it or what is the potential due to that okay it is independent of this factor it depends on it and right capacitance depends on it means c is a function of a c is function of b and c is depending on medium c depends on medium if medium changes the value of permittivity changes for any other medium the permittivity is increasing it is more for any medium for any medium of dielectric constant k dielectric constant k epsilon sub x n that is k times epsilon 0 and therefore capacitance of capacitor for any medium will be equal to k times epsilon at a by d or that will be equal to k times c naught so this is the relation between capacitance of capacitor with vacuum between the plates and the medium between the plates from this also you can define the dielectric constant k as it is a ratio of capacitance of capacitor with the medium between the plates to the vacuum between the plates so this way one more definition of dielectric constant you can write here it is the ratio of capacitance of capacitor with medium between the plates to the vacuum between the plates so this way you can find out the capacitance of a capacitor again it depends on which factor that is if area of the plate increases capacitance of capacitor increases if separation in the plates increases then the capacitance decreases and if medium changes then also capacitance change energy stored in capacitor energy as it is defined as the ability to do work so here amount of work done in storing charge on the plates of capacitor can be calculated let's say for example if a small amount of charge dq is stored on the plate of a capacitor for that amount of work done is dw you can write dw is equal to v into dq where v is the potential due you know, to the charge dq which is stored on the capacitor as we know q is equal to c into v it means that v is equal to q by c so v is equal to q by c so dw is equal to 1 by c into q d so total work done in storing charge from 0 to q on the plates of capacitor is w is integration of q by c d integration of q dq is q square by 2 and that's why work done is q square by 2c so the potential energy stored in the capacitor is q square by 2c it can be also written as half cv square or half qv as you know q is equal to c into v <coughs> and v is equal to q by c so putting these values you can write u is equal to half cv square that is equal to half q another term is energy density energy density is defined as the energy stored per unit volume of capacitor 
Window capacitor have a plate area A. Separation is D. So volume of capacitor is A into D. Energy stored in the capacitor is U. So energy density that is energy stored upon volume. Any of this equation, if you use half C V square upon A D, C is absolutely not A by D, V is equal to E into D. So putting these values, you can write it is half absolutely not E square. Also, electric current E is equal to sigma by epsilon 0 between the plates of capacitor, and that's why it becomes half sigma square by epsilon 0. So this way you can find out the energy stored in capacitor as well as energy density of capacitor. Series combination of capacitors. If capacitors are connected in series with a battery, then charge on each capacitor it is because of induction of charge on each plate. And that's why on each capacitor amount of charge will be equal. Let's say Q is the charge stored on each plate of capacitor. Then potential difference across capacitor 1 is V1 is equal to Q by C1. Across C2 it is Q by C2. Across C3 it will be Q by C3. Net potential of the combination V, we can say it is V1 plus V2 plus V3. So we can write V to V1 plus V2 plus V3 where V is the net potential of this combination. Here, charge Q it is drawn from the battery equivalent capacitance of the series combination if it is E suffix S, then we can write V is equal to Q by Cs, where V1, V2 and V3 are Q by C1, Q by C2 and Q by C3. So from this you can write 1 by Cs is 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. So we can say in series connection, reciprocal of equivalent capacitance is equal to sum of reciprocal of capacitance due to individual capacitors. It means that in series combination capacitance of the capacitor decreases. The reason that is as we know C is equal to epsilon naught A by D as C is equal to epsilon naught A by D we can say C is inversely proportional to D as capacitors are connected in series we can say here plate area it is seen but the equivalent separation that is d1 d2 d3 that is why equivalent capacitor having separation between the two plates is equal to d1 plus d2 plus d3 and that's why as separation increases capacitance decreases and that's the reason in series connection capacitance of equivalent capacitor decreases another is parallel combination of capacitors when capacitors are connected in parallel with the battery, potential difference across each capacitor because all the capacitors are connected across the two points. So across the two points, potential difference for each capacitor it is equal. Now, if charge Q is drawn by this combination, out of that charge Q, let's say Q1 is charged stored on capacitor 1, Q2 is stored on capacitor 2, and Q3 is stored on capacitor 3. Then total charge Q is equal to, we can write Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Here, as potential difference is V, we can write Q1 is equal to C1V, Q2 is equal to C2V, Q3 is equal to C3V. And that's why Q1, Q2, Q3 can be replaced like this. Okay? If total charge Q, as we know that the potential difference across the combination is V total charge drawn that is Q and equivalent capacitance of this parallel combination if we write as C suffix P then Q is equal to C suffix P to V. V is common in all the terms so Cp is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. It means that in parallel combination equivalent capacitance is equal to sum of capacitance due to individual capacitors. As you know, capacitance of a capacitor is directly proportional to area of cross section. Here, in parallel connection, area of the plate increases A1 plus A2 plus A3. Equivalent capacitor, its area increases, and that's why the capacitance also increases. It means if you want to increase the capacitance of capacitor, we have to connect them in parallel. If you want to decrease the capacitance of capacitor, you have to connect the capacitors in series. So that way you can get the equivalent or desired value of capacitor. Another factor on which capacitance of capacitor depends that is medium between the two plates of capacitor. If you put a conductor between the two plates of a capacitor, you know that in the conductor, electric field inside the conductor is zero. E inside is 
zero. Because electric field is zero, that's why potential difference, as we know, potential difference V is equal to P into D. So this will be also zero. And potential difference if it is zero, we know that capacitance C is equal to Q by V. If potential difference is zero, capacitance goes to infinite. And that's why capacitance of a capacitor with conductor between the two pairs of a capacitor that goes to infinity. Another is dielectric. Dielectrics are nothing but the insulators. When you put a dielectric medium between the two pairs of a capacitor, then electric will be to the two pairs of a capacitor will decrease. It will decrease by the factor P. Electric field between the two pairs of a capacitor that is electric field in vacuum divided by the factor as the electric field decreases and that's why potential difference V is equal to instead of here it was E0 into D this will become E0 by K into D okay. and because potential difference decreases and capacitance as we see Q by V therefore capacitance increases so the rule of dielectric between the two pairs of a capacitor is as capacitance a capacitor to want to increase the capacitance if you put a dielectric electric will be the two pairs of capacitor will decrease electric will decreases potential difference will decrease potential difference decreases then the capacitance will increase so this is the role of dielectric in the capacitor